Hello all. So today we'll be talking about data upgrade from business cycle 14 to business cycle 23. This will be a little bit different because this is coming from a customer request which is interesting. So today we'll see can we upgrade a database from business cycle 14 to business cycle 23 using customer license. So there's nothing new, it's just a Kronos database that will be upgrading. But the only difference would be that this time we'll be using a customer license. So if you are interested, go forward. Otherwise, I'll see you into the next video. Before we go forward, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't, because that helps YouTube to kind of understand how relevant this video is and it reaches to a wider audience, which will help more people into the community. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And without wasting further time, let's get into it. So I have a copy of Business Central 14, uh, North American version. There are no customization into it. We have no plans to do that. But in this, there is my customer license, which is already loaded. So if you are upgrading to Business Central 23, which we'll be doing in this particular video, you can refer to this article on Microsoft website, MSDN, which is Business Central 2023 Release Wave 2 under Application and Data from version 14 Unmodified Cal Application. <clears throat> now remember, this is Unmodified Cal Application means you cannot have any customizations, neither custom objects, neither customizations on base Microsoft object in Business Central 14. If that's where you are, let's try following the article and see how it goes. So we have talked about this in the past videos. So what I'm going to do is I have already copied the scripts into different PowerShell scripts here. So let me try to open those. And first I will load my first script, which is here. BC 41 14 and let me zoom this in okay BC 14 prepare for upgrade and let's see what those are so that we before we move forward so first what you have to do is after you read this is if you have data encryption enabled you have to disable those then you have to uninstall all the extensions for this Microsoft tells you step by step how you can do that but at the end there is a command which gets all the app from the current environment and uninstall all the extensions so i just copied this here already this is my first command then the second command is to unpublish all extension and if you come down here you can just do it with a single line of command and then the last but not least is unpublish all system and test application symbols, which are the symbols, not the extensions, um, which you can do with just by this command. If you are on multi-tenant, you will run this, but I'm not using a multi-tenant environment. And then at the end, you will stop the service. So that all has been copied here. I have defined two variables what is the server instance name which is my service name pc 14 cu 35 and what is my tenant id and i think i should double quote it so let me just do that just to keep it simple i'm not sure will this be a success or not but let's watch let's figure that out that can we upgrade a business central environment without changing the license and now the theory behind it is very simple that Microsoft does upgrades in Business Central SaaS. And I'm hoping that they don't change the license during the upgrade on the service tier. So I'm hoping, and if I'm not wrong, I have read it in the past, that Microsoft have allowed customer license for the upgrading of Business Central. So let's test that out. So we'll run that whole section together because we have all the parameters set. Uh, because I'm not doing multi-tenant, I have set my tenant ID to be default. So let's first load the modules for Business Central 14. This will kind of load all these commands. 
and then I'll just select all this together and run it in one go as I do that it will start executing one by one and if there is something that would have been executed and at the end the service has been stopped which kind of confirms that this step has been successfully completed now the next set of activities that we are going to do and I'll have to close the PowerShell because at one point given point of time the PowerShell ISE can only have one module loaded now we are going to follow the part 2 of the equation and I have split that into five different parts so let's pick the first part in this part we are just following till the service gets set up <clears throat> and let's see how that is done but just FYI and this is something that has been done after V22 when the FLF license are no longer supported this is the new step which is not there if you are watching the previous videos <clears throat> The license file that we have inside our database gets stored in certain tables inside Business Central. Because the license type is changing from an FLF file, now on-prem will have a .pc license file that's available. Microsoft would like you to clear out all the references of that license file from the database. Otherwise, you can have problem in completing the upgrade process. And for that, Microsoft has said that you have to run these three commands into your SQL environment. Now, in the second command, it says app database name. And in the third command, it says tenant database name. Now, those are applicable for multi-tenant. If you are on a single tenant like I am in, <clears throat> then both the database name, app database name and tenant database name are same. same. So what I've done, I've copied this here and I'm going to run all these three queries into my database. I have just changed the database name here to, what I, the, to, to my database name so that this empties the license, old license, FLF license info from it. So let's run this. Three rows are affected and the license kind of process has been cleaned up. Now the first set of PowerShell command that we are going to run is going to convert the application to 23 which if you have done upgrades in the NEV world is equivalent to opening your database to an higher executable. There's a command for this, here it is, that you can run. Then it sets up your service tier for the upgrade where it sets up the destination app for migration which is the, uh, the base app description here so the app id of the system app and the app id of the base app that's done to configure the destination app for migration and this setting is setting up your service tier to the exact database name once that is done it is setting up the user permission from extension it is disabling the task scheduler if there is any and then at the end it is restarting the server instance once the server instance is restarted, at this point, it is saying here that you need to import a business central partner license. Now, in this case, I'm going to use my customer license and to see what happens. So let's head back and try to set these parameter. Our new business central service instance is BC230. My database server is localhost and my application database name is this so i'll just paste it here my new bc version which i don't think is relevant at this point but let me check no it's not so i'll just remove this parameter from here and my customer license so i have placed it somewhere let me just see where it is so okay here is my customer bc23 license so i'll just copy it as part copy part and i'll paste it 
here. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm doing a conversion of the database, which is the database name, the database server. I'm setting up some properties on the service tier and then I'm importing the license and then restarting the service. And let's see how that works. So first let's upload the module so that all these commands are relevant. And now I'll pick this set and run this. The confirmation message to convert the database. Yes, and it is converting the database now. Now it should process all of these one by one and the conversion has been done. The settings are being set one by one. And at the end, it will import my customer license. There should not be any error in the import process for sure, but we'll understand what happens with the customer license as we move forward into the process. So now the customer license has been uploaded and the service state is back to running. So service is now running back. So we are good with this. So we'll close this and we'll open the part two. The part two of this does something and let's go back to the article. The part two of BC23 script publishes the minimum set of extensions which are required. And we have talked about this into the previous video. So I'll not get into the details, but in summary, you need the system application, the base application and the uh, application application sorry extension the system application extension the base application extension and the application extension to be installed before you do any kind of upgrade because these are the core set of extensions that are needed so we are skipping this step and we can talk about it later but right now i'm going to publish these three main core extensions into it and then uh, okay, this is a specific to India and then I'm going to restart the server instance as listed here. After the restart is done, it does execute a synchronization of the tenant, which means it checks that the tenant database schema is a match and there are no destructive changes into the object set that you have. So this is a command for that and you can run it. And then after this point will come in the second part of the uh, the next part of the script so what i need i need the system map path so let's go back in here go to the bc23 folder we have talked about it in the past in the application you see the system application folder here somewhere go to the source pick the app file copy path and this becomes my system application the second is my base app. <clears throat> so if I go and search for base app source and I can just pick the app copy path and paste it in here. The last one is the application path. So I'll go back and look for application and I'll copy that path and paste it here. So what I've done, I have decided, uh, defined where these paths are. I have set up my parameters if they are needed and I should be able to now execute this whole set which publishes the three core extensions, restarts the service and then synchronize the tenant. So let's run that. So as I start running it, it should start processing all of these commands one by one, starting from publishing the system app and hopefully there should be a message hopefully but let's see what happens and then once the sync start we should see a sync progress bar kind of popping up if there is no message on the publish then we can expect that it's publishing in the background and you can always check it from your activity monitor if something is happening on your environments or not so if i look at it here <clears throat> There is something getting inserted into my database. Okay. And that's application metadata. 
so that means an extension is being used, published so there's a lot of things happening on this environment so let's wait for it while this is happening i want you to put into comment what you think what should happen should this can can this be upgraded with a customer license just put your views into the comment to this video and then we'll see what happens <clears throat> i normally watch all my comments try to reply all those comments and yes i'm a little bit delayed on some of the comments but i'll make sure to answer each and every comment that you have on the blog so i hope you have put your comments into the into the chat and i'll wait for this to complete so i'm pausing the video for a while and then i'll see you other side as things starts moving here okay as you can see it seems all of that has been done the service is restarted and now it's asking for confirmation because i did not add that confirmation into the sync command so i'll say yes that start syncing now it'll start syncing now hopefully you all have commented out what you think at this point what should happen and you can detail it out will it fail in the sync will it fail in the upgrade or will the upgrade be over with the customer license i'll be watching guys so let's see right now it's validating that the sync the schema of all the specifically tables where the data is is intact and is upgradable so that's what kind of sync does at this moment so i'll again pause the video and we'll restart once the sync kind of uh, completes it's moving fast and it's done so i didn't have to okay and this happened faster because it's a cronus database if it takes a longer time on your system don't worry it's just based on how much database size you have and how much data you have into the system okay so now it's time to load the third script which is our sync app and upgrade so before we do that let's try to see what's here now at this point we have synchronized the tenant now we are going to synchronize each of these apps the system app the base app and the application app we are going to skip this step because uh, for other extension we can deal them separately and these need to be done in the same order so i'm going to sync all these three apps and then i'm going to call the data upgrade which is called just by this command so let's come back and set some parameter then id set this is set and the new bc version is the version of the apps that you are using in the upgrade which i'm not aware about so what i can do is i can copy the path and do a get nav app info and the path directly and give me detail of the app so as you can see here the version of the application app and all apps at this point from microsoft especially the core one will have the same version so i'll specify that version here in my parameter if you're not sure i'll show you for one more thing if i go to base app copy that path and do a get nav app info for the path you will notice that this also have the same exact version so i know that all three have the same exact version and i have set that as a parameter here and that parameter is set here with this it will synchronize all these three apps and also will start the upgrade it should ask a confirmation before the upgrade starts so let's run this so as i run this it will start synchronizing each of these apps one by one the system app is a smaller app in the same way application app is nothing but my base app is still the biggest app into the system so it'll take some time to synchronize the app hopefully so as soon as the upgrade starts i'll kind of restart the video but i'm going to pause it for a while so that your time is not wasted when you're watching this 
before that let's have a look what's happening it's synchronizing each and every table in these different apps to validate that the data can be upgraded so let's pause it and i'll see you so the sync is completed for all those apps and now it's asking me for a confirmation of the data upgrade process as soon as i click yes it just feel like that it's over but it is not because upgrade kind of runs behind the scene so to get the upgrade status you can do a get nav app sorry nav data upgrade something yes and then you can set the parameter to get the progress and then you can set the interval to refresh that progress in let's say 10 millisecond so if i hit enter now oh i forgot to set the instance my bad i should see at what stage my database upgrade is which will refresh after every 10 second so my database upgrade is currently over and i can confirm that by first setting up the server instance which i forgot so let me do that server instance pc230 and then detailed what detail is old so what i'll do is out as grid view now once i do that it'll show me each and every step that get executed and also the stage or state of it the only thing is that it is not refreshable so instead of using the first command which is this progress command if you try to use this one you will have to kind of refresh this auto manually by running the command again because this does not get updated at the runtime it is just a snapshot of the detailed view of what happened so if you look at it each of these command stage is completed that confirms that my data upgrade is completed and it has upgraded the base app uh, okay the system app the base app by microsoft and this base is your platform more or less and the system app and the base app has been upgraded successfully so till now the bets are on we are still able to upgrade till the part three let's go back into the part four so this time i'm going to load my part four which is the final set of steps more or less and let's see what those are so once the upgrade data is over you also need to install the app that we'll do here and you only have to install the application app rest all gets installed automatically during the upgrade the two apps uh, the remaining two apps once that is done um, you install third party extensions we'll come to that in a while because people forget about the last steps so i kept that separate then you update the control add-in for which here's the script which i've copied into my powershell script and then at the point i need to change the application version for help and support and for my help pages so you can see that you can you need to set the application version you need to set the nav application and you need to set the uh, you need to then sync and then again quickly run the data upgrade which will not take much time and then for help and support you need to set the help and support solution version here and that's it no, nothing much into it so we'll come to it and we'll start setting it up so now it's asking for the new bc version and we know that that is this 23.3 so i'll just copy this and paste it here okay now the only parameter that is missing is add in folder which is referred in here now if you look at the documentation here the add in folder is actually the folder that is in your and you can see the parameter on the top if this does not make sense here you can get the detail where your add-ins are stored and like your add-ins are stored in this path on a default installation so we'll copy it and we'll verify does our add-ins stored in the same path or not 
okay and seems it's not because I'm not 210 so make sure not copy anything blindly I'll see here yes I have this path as it is so I'll copy this and paste it into my script okay so what I'm doing here let's quickly review I'm upgrading installing the app and then upgrading the control add-in and then changing the application version to this setting up the nav application to new bc version synchronizing the tenant and then starting the upgrade if you don't want a confirmation message or ok sign here you can say skip verification oh, sorry skip confirmation or confirm confirm okay so we'll get a confirmation on the start nav data upgrade this should happen fast so let's see and before we do that let me try accessing bc23 that i have so if i try to refresh this at this moment it is yet not refreshed it is refreshing it is still connected to my old environment so let's wait for a while to see what happens okay still loading okay now if you right now look into my extension management just to confirm here are only these three apps out of them the application is not yet installed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this which will install this and also set the control add-ins <coughs> And the other thing that it's going to set so that you are aware why we are running this that if you go to help and support right now what you see is oh application version as 14.36 which is incorrect so to correct this what we are going to run here is these sets of commands so let's run this set also and this might be the final step if, and if you see now it's asking for a sync which I forgot to set okay yes yes and yes okay because I'm connected there's a problem okay now because I have done that I'll have to change these parameters for a while I'll not change the script so I'll just comment this for a while and run these two steps manually because I have a client session running which you should not have during the upgrade but because I have done that I'll have to change these two parameters to be exact values I cannot use parameters because I cannot run the whole command okay and default and tenant default okay let's run this line yes yes okay and let's run the upgrade oh are there active connections i don't know let me see what's oh maybe it's sql connection that i'm kind of utilizing because this session is connected so I'm not going to save this disable this let's come down let's try to run the sync again okay yes okay that's done hopefully this is also done no okay so what I'll do before this is I'll restart the environment okay just a mis silly mistake of starting the client which is causing all this problem so let's see what happens because as the service will restart all the active connection to that service will be removed and I will be able to start the upgrade because yes I could have set up a flag here to uh, skip uh, user session check but I didn't want it to okay. now I've done that and I'm going to run this 
started we know the drill how we can check what happened so let's see and this all has been completed now right. for your benefit or for my future references i'll remove this and i'll also add this in the middle so that if there is a problem it kind of gets handled in the future okay sorry for doing this while recording but i might not revisit it for a while now let's see what's my last step that you were able to see other ms app because we are upgrading from business central 14 technically speaking there are no apps available in my environment the only apps that are available are my system app the pc uh, the base app and the application app as we saw but as we know there are a lot of apps available right in the center we want this list to be bigger because there are functionalities available and in the microsoft document microsoft suggests you to do it as you go through the process my personal recommendation would be that any custom app and not just from business central 14 even from other versions to the latest version of business central first just follow the standard microsoft upgrade with just three apps and then any other app that you have maybe in business central 14 upgrade that separately if you have to install a bunch of apps after that go ahead do it separately because it doesn't interfere with the base Microsoft apps until unless there's an upgrade logic which you need to run with the Microsoft logic that's other situation but otherwise you can do this separately in case of upgrade you will still publish the new version you will still synchronize the new version and instead of install it will be an upgrade start nav app data upgrade step what I've done here is I've picked I guess 20 different apps uh, which includes API, Packs, Data Archive, Data Search, Email, Emailing Apps, Business Heading, Business Event App, Business Event App, and then uh, the Permissions App and the Report Layout. You can have a different set of list based on looking at the application folder in your product DVD and based on your business requirement and that's okay. The only thing that you need to keep in mind while doing this is that the order of these installation should follow the dependency graph. Like, I cannot install SMTP connector before I install SMTP API. So they need to be in the right order and the way you check it is, let's say this is SMTP connector, right? So let me show you how you do that. So if I copy this here, SMTP connector path and I use the same command to get nav app info with the path parameter you will see the same detail don't forget to look into this area called dependencies now dependencies tell you that to install SMTP connector you need to have application which is already there and you also need the email SMTP API which means even in the folder structure if email smtp api is before smtp sorry smtp connector is after smtp api <coughs> sorry that does not mean that they follow the same sequence it is based on the dependency graph so to install this there is a dependency that you need to have smtp api which means smtp api will get installed first then SMTP connector. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. Everything else looks good. What I'm doing here is I'm going to publish all these apps. Then I'm going to synchronize all these apps. And I'm going to install all these apps. So I'll select the whole set. And run this. Now if I have taken care of the dependencies in the right way they all should get installed in my environment. If something is wrong, <clears throat> that particular should error out and it died, it did. So let me stop it here. Okay. It's coming at the sink. 
let me see in the environment what happened i hope it should have been done till now but let's see extension management okay and there are quite a few apps which are installed and there are some which are giving me errors okay so if i start counting them one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven eleven are there out of them some are already installed and some are not so let's do it one by one not a problem not each app one by one but the set one by one so i'll set this up and try to see if anything is missed no this is done i'll have to copy these parameters for my testing so i'll just copy them here and try to run the sync okay there are some errors let's see them uh, okay because these are already synchronized and then after smtp connector there's an error message so let's see where is that smtp connector okay smtp connector graph api there is a issue over here because that's kind of behind the scene i guess let me see email smtp connector and then oh there was an exclude see i can miss out the name sometime and i need to copy it from here my bad and once it is copied i can update that email logging using graph api like this okay hopefully that fixes out the problem let's see oh no after on-prem there's this exclude report layouts okay that should have been there that should not be the problem but let me paste it okay now let's see and there are no problems if you have to multiple times sync it if it is already sync it does not cause any problem oh it cannot do on-prem na on-prem na okay let's see get an app of info of this file maybe the app name is different so let's do a get nav app info and put the path and the app is called okay so the name is a little bit different for the uh, extension versus the file name my bad okay let's do a sync everything looks good it's already synchronized so no problems there and if that's the case i will have to fix the install part because that will cause a problem otherwise so i'll just paste it here and replace the word sync with install okay let's keep doing that okay done with that and now we'll run the upgrade part so I'll just because I'm running it into pieces, I'll have to copy this here and then run this part. Okay. And anything that is already installed will get this confirmation and everything else is done. So now if I go to my extension management page in Mapping Cell 23, I should be able to see all of them installed. So let me refresh this for a while and get into my extension management and everything seems to be installed whatever i needed and here if i look at it there are no other steps which are left if you have third party extension as i said i would highly recommend you to use the last section of it once you have done it until unless it has a dependency on the upgrade path now going forward at the end to summarize you can actually upgrade a business central customer with the customer license typically people who have done upgrades for all these years have always written their first step 
even the Microsoft document as of today says that you need to change to the partner license which we have just proved that you do not have to change the license. A customer license is valid for upgrading Business Central. Business Central to Business Central and even Business Central 14 to a Business Central AL version. Hope this video was able to clear your doubt. I had this confusion in my mind and I just wanted to verify that whatever I remember from the history of reading about licenses and all is still valid. If you have any questions, any comments, you know the drill, add it into the comment section. To share this video with your office friends and colleagues so that they also learn about this new knowledge. And if you haven't, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm not doing pretty well with the health, so that's why the <clears throat> frequency is not up to mark. But I'm sure I'll be back with the actual frequency as soon as possible. If you have suggestions for the video, add it into the comment section. And I'll make sure that you your request is fulfilled into the future videos. Till then, have a great day and I'll see you into the next video sooner than later.